And now, B-Movie Mania presents Dark Hollywood. With your hosts, Michael Hayes and Paul A. Brooks. Tonight's guest, actor and director, Robin Paris. To call the hot tip line, dial 419-777-8478. That number once again, 419-7-SQUIRT. Now, from deep within the Windy City, here is Michael Hayes. Hello, travelers of the ether. Welcome to Dark Hollywood. I am your host, Michael Hayes. You are here with me tonight to hear and discuss all that is true in Hollywood. Tonight we'll be talking about Tommy Wiseau, actor, director, writer, plane hijacker. We'll find out. With me tonight is special guest, actor, and creator of The Room Actors, Where Are They Now? Robin Paris. And also, listeners, as you'd expect with me as always, is our man on the Hollywood streets, Paul Brooks. Paul, are you there? Mike, I am here. Good evening once again from Hollywood, California. You're still there. You haven't left, have you? I am out here, I am, Mike, it's not easy, it's not easy being out here, but I am making a go of it and trying to get to the bottom of what the heck is going on out here in Los Angeles. Well, I can't imagine you're having an easy time, Paul. There's so many things going on in Hollywood. How could you find the bottom of such a tall, tall stack? It is a bottomless pit, you might say, of dark, dark stuff. Well, Paul, you have brought to us a topic that I (laughs) Mm -hmm. think is pretty spicy. This is something that the fans of Dark Hollywood have been clamoring for. They've been asking you for it. They've been asking me for it. (laughs) I think they've been asking Robin Paris for it. Oh, I have no doubt. And... Tonight, we are finally going to unravel the mystery. Is Tommy Wiseau actually D.B. Cooper? And tonight, Michael, I wanted to get to the bottom of this. So I am currently, as of right now, on special assignment. I am on the street in front of the Langham Apartments in Koreatown, right here in Los Angeles, where Tommy Wiseau currently resides, actually. Wow. Yes. Wow. That is... That... And there's no... No secret service? No FBI agents visible to you? Well, you know, uh, I'm out here taking a big risk being out here. I don't know if he's inside. I don't know if he is outside somewhere and he is on his way home right now to his Hollywood apartment but I am going to stay out here all night if I have to until I can confront him and finally learn the truth and get down to the bottom of this mystery that has been haunting Hollywood for decades. Well, Paul, I cannot wait for that. But first, maybe we should. Why don't we go to a commercial here? How does that sound, Paul? Sounds great to me. I will hold it down here on the street and I will let you know if at any point Tommy Wiseau slash possibly D.B. Cooper shows up. 
In the near future, when the greenhouse gases have wrestled this planet into an unlivable death sphere and all of the ocean life has gone belly up, getting good, reliable seafood is going to be nigh near impossible. But don't worry, BMM Industries has just the thing to whet your appetite. Simply sift the sand of the barren beaches and collect any and all dried crustacean carcasses and stuff them into the BMM Industries' newly patented shrimp sock tail. That's right, you'll be able to have soft and delectable seafood as if the earth apocalypse had never happened. Just sift the sand, stuff the sock, and place it on any of the sweltering sidewalks of the barren wasteland within 7 to 10 minutes, and you'll have more jambalaya than you can shake a smoldering stick at. And no need for water. These patented shrimp socktails have lovingly retained the sweat of your favorite pre-apocalypse athletes, so you'll never need to waste water on steam again. And you don't have to take my word for it. Listen to these satisfied shrimp socktail customers. The earth's on fire, but my tummy's full. It, it's almost as gross as it sounds, but not quite. Wow, my food smells like LeBron. So go to bit.ly slash shrimp socktail to get your very own shrimp socktail kit. That's bit.ly slash S-H-R-I-M-P-S-O-C-K-T-A-I-L to get your own shrimp socktail. New from BMM Industries. It's November 24th, 1971, the day before Thanksgiving, and a man named Dan Cooper schedules a flight from Portland, Oregon to Seattle. And on that flight, he tells a stewardess he has a bomb and hijacks the plane for $200,000. He then, with the help of two pilots and two stewardesses, fly the plane to Reno only to open the back door jumping out of the plane never to be seen again with his 2,000 200,000 god damn it 200,000 dollars which was quite a bit of money back then yes it was Paul yes it was still is today even for some of us at least Now, Paul, what what sort of dark secret do you think you've uncovered regarding Mr. D.B. Cooper? Well, Mike, you say you say dark secret. I think really you should pluralize that. It's dark secrets when it comes to Tommy Wiseau. (laughs) Tommy Wiseau as some of you may know, is a man who wrote, directed, and starred in a movie called The Room, which is a worldwide cult phenomenon. Uh, When you say cult, Paul... Yes. Do you mean the occult? Well, no, but, but... It certainly, I would not put that past Mr. Wiseau based on what I know of him, which is not a lot, admittedly, oh. but, um, you know, he is someone who has a lot of money and no one quite knows how he came into all this money. He is someone who claims to be a certain age, but we don't really know how old he is. He has some sort of ambiguous accent. He's certainly not from America, but we don't know where he's from. His background is completely unknown. So you can see, Mike, that we have sort of some parallels here with Mr. (laughs) Cooper going on. There are strings that can be tied and drawn amongst many of these secret dark points. Correct. And I am out here to get some answers from him. So as soon as I hear or see anything from him, I will let you know immediately uh, because I am out here in Hollywood trying to track him down. Now, now, Paul, is that is that Hollywood uh, one word or is that two words? Well, it used to be two words because it used to be called Hollywood land. And oh. um, they, they, at some point in the 30s or 40s, they took the land out 
and now it is just Hollywood. Well, certainly for a nefarious reason, I'm sure. Absolutely. So, Paul, stop me if I am misunderstanding what you are saying and what I want to believe. But are you suggesting that perhaps Mr. Tommy Wiseau, strange and mysterious director of the occult classic film The Room, Mm, mm -hmm. is actually D.B. Cooper? He, are you suggesting that in 1971, the night before Thanksgiving, that D.B. Cooper was actually Tommy Wiseau on a plane? and not Dan Cooper? Well, here's the thing, Mike. We have an overwhelming amount of evidence that indicates that that could actually be the case. Uh, Again, let's look at the facts. Let's look at what we know for sure. We know that D.B. Cooper, after hijacking this plane and running off with $200,000 in 1971, which is about $1.2 million today, Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. was never heard from or seen again. Now, you tell me, Mike, we don't know where where this quote-unquote Tommy Wiseau is from. We don't know where he was born. We don't know when he showed up here in America. But it seems to me that if you're going to plant the seeds for becoming a successful movie director, the best way to do that is to start out with, I don't know, say, just maybe $1.2 million. Uh You invest that in some properties. You invest that in some blue jeans. Uh uh, And you build on that until you get to a point where you have enough money to finance a film so you know these are the facts Mike and I think they speak for themselves Paul I've been thinking about this D.B. Cooper thing that you're talking about I thought about something else for a minute but now I'm back to thinking about this okay great and I do know that D.B. Cooper is supposed to be somewhere about 5, 10 to 6 feet tall. Correct. And if I'm not mistaken, Tommy Wiseau is somewhere else in that height range, or at least close. He is in that height range. Um, I should mention that I have met him on several occasions. Uh, I am a fan of The Room. You know, it, it, it is a cult classic. I'm not sure your feelings oh. on it. Uh, um, I, I believe it is also an occult classic. Yes, yes. yes. I see what you're doing there, and, and I do not disagree with you. Um, <laughs> but the thing about Tommy is, uh, you know, he is a little bit shorter than that, I would say, in real life. But oh. think about it. Somebody in 1971 who was five foot nine, uh, you know, gravity over the years, Mike, can take its toll. So somebody who was five foot nine in, in, in 1971 could very well be five foot eight, five foot seven in, you know, 2011, 2019, whatever the case may be. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Now, now, Paul, may I ask something else about you? Please do. I'm out here well, uh, in the streets of Hollywood. Are you a comic file? Are you a fan of the written and illustrated word? Well, Mike, I can't say that it's my main cup of tea. Um, When I was a child, I um, was forced to live inside of a bubble for a time, and Mm -hmm. I did Mm -hmm. have several comic books delivered to me uh, at that time to keep myself Mm -hmm. entertained. Mm -hmm. But since then, uh, I'm afraid to say I've fallen off a little bit in terms of uh, that style of, you know, art and media. Well, Paul, and maybe you then understand what I'm about to get at because mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> this is not anything new but a long time ago in Europe there used to be a comic series called the Dan Cooper Comics. 
Okay. And it is believed by the FBI and those of us in the know that the nickname Dan Cooper came from these comics. Hmm. But there, but there's a twist, Paul. Oh. There's a twist. These comics have never been translated to English. They are Belgian comics. Ah, yes. There it is, Mike. I thought you would see where I was going. Well, obviously there is reason to believe that Tommy Wiseau has certainly spent some time in Europe, perhaps in the 70s, um, oh. and perhaps, in fact, in Belgium. So I think I see where you're going with this. I think you might be suggesting whatever Tommy Wiseau slash D.B. Cooper's real name is, he may have gotten the idea to become D.B. Cooper from these comics in Belgium that you're talking about here. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Fascinating. Absolutely. Oh, Mike, hold on. I'm sorry, one yeah, second. Oh. Uh, there's someone in the window right out here, uh-huh. right right in uh-huh. front of Tommy's building. And, this uh, is uh, fascinating. Okay, bl- black hair. Mm-hmm. Uh, this could be it. No, it's a dog. Okay, I'm sorry. Oh. It, it was. A, it's a dog. Uh, Wait, it's... Oh. It's an owner taking their dog outside to oh. take a piss. Gotcha. I'm okay. sorry for the interruption. I was worried, and I have to admit for a second, I thought perhaps you were suggesting that D.B. Cooper was actually a person and a dog. And for a second, I thought, genius. Well, you know, I mean, he is seemingly cr- credit where credit is due here. He is seemingly a master of disguise, so it's hard to say what form he's, you know, going to turn up as. Much like those dastardly three children that keep dressing up in a coat and coming into my home and having their way with my wife, Hmm. I thought it could be the real deal. Still dealing with that, huh? Unfortunately, yes. Yeah. Well, good luck. I will get those kids someday. Bless you. Thank you. All, uh, all that aside, Paul. Yes. What do you think can explain the fact that Tommy Wiseau, while we don't know his origins, was probably no more than 16 years old in 1971, the year of the hijacking? Well, you know, that is, that is the conventional line of thinking. But something that you and our listeners need to keep in mind, Mike, is that that could be completely not true. Um, If you have read Greg Sestero's book, The Disaster Artist, which I highly recommend, by the way. Uh Uh, Greg, of course, is one of the other stars of The Room Mm -hmm. and is good friends with Tommy Wiseau in real life. Um, And in his book, in The Disaster Artist, he talks about the process of shooting the room with Tommy Wiseau, and he talks about the notion that Tommy had wanted to put specific things into the movie that people objected to. Specifically, he wanted his character of Johnny to possibly be perceived as being a vampire. Now, you know, that is a fictional element. That's that's oh. obviously in the fictional element of the film, but I think you see where I'm going with this, Mike. Oh, yes. The character of Johnny in the room is essentially Tommy Wiseau. There's really not any difference there. He's laying it out there for the public to see and interpret the truth. Is it possible? In fact, you know what? I'm not even going to say, is it possible? I'm going to tell you, Mike, that I think it's probable that Tommy Wiseau is most likely an actual vampire in real life. So his age in 1971 is really of no consequence. And in fact, Paul, this answers a question I had for you as well about the fact that 
It is believed that possibly Mr. D.B. Cooper died when he jumped out the back of the plane. plane. Right, right. But as a vampire, that right. would be no problem. Yeah, I mean, you know, a lot of people have said, well, look, he would not have survived jumping out of a plane <laughs> in those sort of conditions. He would have, he would have frozen to death. Uh, you know, almost immediately. Well, yeah, of course he would have frozen to death if he was human. Yes. <laughs> but I, I think we're making it pretty clear here that he is operating under other circumstances that is beyond our comprehension. It's very true. They, they talk about the parachutes not being necessarily what he would want, but we know those were just eight guys. We know mm -hmm. that after he jumped out, he fell... And then, poof, he turns into a bat, carries away his money, and flies to wherever he wants. Absolutely. I mean, why would you need a parachute? I'm sure he brought the parachute on board so, oh. that, the, so that the flight crew and everything, you know, saw, oh, he had a parachute, he jumped out. Mike, he turns into a bat 10 seconds after he's out the door, and he's gone, you know? Absolutely. It's not, it's not hard. It's not hard to figure out. The naive will be ignorant. Correct. Up next, we're going to speak with special guest Robin Paris. But first, a word from our sponsor. When the inevitable collapse of the fart vomit known as the world economy comes and you're left to defend what little but precious trinkets and valuables you have, you'll want a way to forget your worries. With BMM Industries' new piss key, you'll be able to do just that. Traditional locks can be cut and broken and any reasonable safe can be drug away by the weakest of children. But fear not, with BMM Industries' newly patented piss key, you can rest assured that your junk won't be in anyone else's trunk. Our newly developed technology allows you to no longer depend upon ludicrous locks, cheap combos, faulty fingerprints, or cumbersome keys. Instead, just urinate on the door that you want to open, and Pisky technology will analyze the refuse and refuse anyone that doesn't match. Your pee is the key to your safety. <laughs> to bask in the warmth of the Pisky technology, go to bit.ly slash Pisky and enter code yum yum fill me with your gold at checkout. That's bit.ly slash Pisky. P-I-S-K-E-Y. Turn your locks into gold. And Mike, I think in the coming years, this is a product that is really going to come in handy for the vast majority of the human population. <laughs> yes. Piss identification will be required. Paul, let's get in someone who might know just a little bit about this, or at least someone who may have been involved. Let's bring in Robin Paris. Robin, are you there? Yes. How are you guys doing? Doing exceptionally spooky and well, I will say. Glad to hear it. I am a little bit chilly. It's a bit of a chilly night here in Hollywood, but I am... I'm making do, Robin. I'm 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 making this work. Well, that sounds good. It is not chilly here. I am in Texas, and it is super hot. It's very hot in Texas. Paul, if you ever get out of Hollywood, perhaps you could investigate Texas. It's it's the L.A. of the South. I've heard. Hmm. Dark Texas does have a nice ring to it. This is true. Absolutely. So, Robin, you are. Famously known as being one of the stars of the cult classic film, The Room. This is true. So that means you may have worked hand in hand with a Mr. Tommy Wiseau. Well, Tommy and I didn't ever actually hold hands. But um, yes, I did work with him. Um, I, I was in the same vicinity as him as we shot The Room, um, as you may know, Citizen Kane of Bad Movies. Um, so, yeah, I had experience with Tommy. He's an interesting character, as, as you probably are aware. That is fantastic. We have someone from 
the front lines here, people. Yes. So, Robin, in general or or overall, how how was your experience with the room? What has that experience been like, and how has it made you feel as a human? Well, that's such a good question. Um, overall, it's been fine. Um, I think initially. I um, went through like the various stages of what well, grief, you know, I was like, Niall, um, depression, <laughs> eventually acceptance and embracing the situation. I think it's, I guess to back up a little, I'm super excited to be involved in the room. I think the room is hilarious and I love going to screenings and I love all the fans. And that's part of the reason I created my show, the room actors, where are they now? You know, I guess if you come to Hollywood and you have plans to, try to make it and be successful and do great projects that if you end up like in quote unquote, the worst movie ever made it, there's a little bit of a period of like, Oh, so that is, <laughs> that's why there was a little bit of like, what denial? I mean, not that I did, I knew the room was bad when I did it, but, um, but it was more like, I just didn't think people would see it. And, and then, um, as it got you know bigger and bigger and bigger, it's like, what, how am I going to be known for this? Crap. What was I thinking? But so, but now, like I said, I'm totally great with it. And it was really fun. It was actually super fun to be involved in it, even when we shot it, because it was really funny. I mean, we had like all these shenanigans on the set, um, crews quitting, um, lots of just really funny things, just like being there on set, watching the film, the room being made was super, super funny. I had a really hard time keeping a straight face when we shot the um, the party scene at the end with Tommy and Greg fighting and Juliet and Greg slow dancing. And it was just, it was like so funny. <laughs> so all in all, I feel good about the room. That is fantastic. I also would be so pleased if I could have been associated. Though, though understand the initial fright. Absolutely. Robin, Paul Brooks here from Hollywood. Hello. Um, Hello. My question for you. Uh, I took Tommy Wiseau's advice. He says, see the room at least a hundred times. And I have in fact seen the room at least a hundred times. Have you also wow. taken his advice? How many times have you seen the film that you have starred in? I would estimate that I have seen the room probably about 33 times take a wild guess and so I think I have some time to you know watch it another 66 times 67 times get to 100 but I, it's, it's important to pace yourself a little bit at a time you don't want to overwhelm yourself with the room it is it's a lot it's a lot to take in um so yeah I have seen it 33 times and I will continue to see it maybe maybe like a couple times per year um for the next um about, uh, 60 years very nice. That's the plan. A work in progress. Yes. Wise words. Wise words. Robin, you you mentioned that you have also worked on uh, a project with the people from the room. You've you've started a series about the people in the room, a true life drama, I believe. Absolutely, it is completely. True to life. It's called The Room Actors, Where Are They Now? A mockumentary. But that mockumentary part, it's it's completely a joke. Um, you have to watch it. And I think you'll realize that it's completely, totally real and realistic and based on truth. But you'll have to see it for yourself to decide. Um, uh, and yes, it, is, it includes seven out of nine of the original room actors. Um, so you will see them all in their real true lives what they're doing right now and there's a wonderful completely uh down to earth documentarian craig kakowski actually he goes by jjj in the in the uh, documentary we'll call it um who is also a completely serious um it's also available on amazon prime and uh, i have two more episodes i'd like to shoot which we were hoping to do in october that's the plan and we do know, all the listeners out there will know that a mockumentary is just code word for the real truth. Correct. True. R Robin, can I ask, what was the genesis of this idea? I know that you've touched on the notion that you could not 
escape the room, similar to how perhaps D.B. Cooper had some trouble escaping from a certain airplane that we will get into. But how exactly did the room actors come about? So the idea came about, um, I do comedy, I'm a comedy writer, and then I'm also obviously in the room, so I thought, you know, I can't escape, there's, there's nothing I can do, I might as well embrace it. Um, but the idea, I guess, just came from the fact that there were there's so many room fans, and there's so many reasons to laugh uh, about the room, and I wanted to keep that laughter going and just create more uh, like a companion piece for the room. And that's what these eight episodes are. You'll find room Easter eggs, room jokes, um, lots of references to the room. Um, and I just thought it would be super fun to kind of just continue to keep, keep people laughing. Um, so that's the inspiration behind it. You know, I, like I said, I couldn't escape it. I thought, well, I should embrace it and I write comedy anyway. So why not do this? I would definitely agree. Did, did the other actors have, the same feelings you did about the room post room. Did they have a hard time coming to terms with that? They are now part of a cult classic that expressly is saturated with cutlery. (laughs) Yes. The cutlery is a big part of the room. Um, I think they were all okay with it for the most part. I think different people had different reactions to it, but Um, for me, I mean, it was, like I said, uh, you know, at first I was like, what? And then I came to embrace it and came to, um, be excited to be involved, um, and happy about it. Um, you know, occasionally it's like when people are like, Hey, you're in the room and and they introduce me that way. And they're, it's just like, I have so, I mean, obviously I've lived a, a long life and the room was one of the many things I've done in my life, just like anybody else. So it's not like it defines me. And so when people try to make it define me, it's a little like, you know, I don't 100 percent love that. But I I, like I associated my name even more with the room. And I did that by choice because I think it's super fun. And I was and I wanted to do it and I wanted to laugh about it and I wanted to have fun with it in the room actors. Where are they now? Everyone's, I think, really good. And that's like we get a lot of comments on YouTube about how that room actors are actually talented and I mean, I guess that's part of the reason I did it is I just wanted to kind of get a little bit of like, um, what's the word? Um, just prove that the room actors could do some decent work. And um, yeah, so I'm proud of what we did with that. That is great advice. And I wish I knew that because if someone thinks that the worst movie ever made is The Room, they have not seen the film up on my website with a elephant and a trampoline. And if you want to see that, you can go to www.yahoo.com and look that up. Yes. That's a shameful film. Mike, may I say? Yes, Paul, please. To, to paraphrase the room, it seems to me like Robin is an expert on all things the room. Is that a quote from the film or from the series? The Room Actors, Where Are They Now? A mockumentary. You seem to be an expert, Mark. (laughs) (laughs) A quote from The Room. Is that right? I think that's the line. Yes. You seem to me to be the expert, Mark. But I haven't used that line yet in The Room Actors, Where Are They Now? And you just brought my attention to it, and I need to. I've got two more episodes, so why don't I will try to integrate that line into the next episodes, (laughs) because I love it. So good. But yes, I am an expert. Thank you for noticing. That is correct. Speaking of your series and the aforementioned cutlery, you have a running gag where there is a, well, certainly people are pummeled and beaten with spoons. Yeah. You have a gag where there is a spoon and a picture in the background. And then that picture seems to keep changing throughout the series, where it is a different piece of handheld dare I say it, not even cutlery sometimes, because I do believe I saw a kitty litter scoop in one of them. Yes, I have framed photos of a kitty litter litter scoop, a blender, a scalpel, a meat tenderizer, and each one of and a few other things. Each one of these is associated with a different room actor. You'll have to figure out who, what goes with who, and maybe watch the show to find out. But in each actor room actors episode we have framed photographs of a piece of you know like yeah like it's cutlery or kitchen equipment just because why not who doesn't have framed photographs of 
That's fair. Like a shovel. I mean, I have a shovel on my wall right now. Shovels are great. Um, since the room did it so beautifully with the spoons and and it worked so well, why not learn from the best, keep it going? It's very clever. But I must know, is this a secret code? Are you sending out into the universe a secret code we must all know that the government does not want us to know? How did you guess? <laughs> uh, that, as a matter of fact, that is, and, um, and they have deep, deep meaning and life-changing meaning. So I suggest you, you watch it and try to figure it out. Oh, yes. So thank you for, again, thanks for noticing. Thanks for noticing the genius. We don't want to put you in any danger, Robin, but I appreciate your candidness. Okay, Mike, uh, Mike, Robin, I'm sorry to interject, but we have a we have a white Lexus pulling up right now into Uh-oh. the driveway. Oh. Uh, I'm not sure we're going to see. Um, Is it him? This could be it. No, it's an old woman. It's an old woman. Oh. Sorry, uh, false alarm. Apologies. Oh. Paul, my heart, my heart was beating. So rapidly, yeah. I, yeah, was worried I'd have another half a heart attack. Uh, my apologies. Uh, I will keep on it though out here uh, in in Hollywood. So also, you need to keep your eye out for a Hummer as well, Paul, because I don't know if you know that Tommy drives a Hummer, a black Hummer. Oh. Um, you will know it because it has the roommovie dot com written on the actual Hummer, and the movie is showing on a loop 24-7 in the Hummer. I actually saw it in, in, in L.A. one time, coincidentally. This is the hot sort of tip we need and the world needs. Inside scoop. Thank you, Robin. Sure. Thank you, Robin. <laughs> so, Robin, has anyone talked to you about the chance that Tommy Wiseau is maybe not who he says he is. Um, so, you know, Tommy, there's a, he's a man of mystery. Uh, even though there's been a book and a movie, I, I would say we, we don't know that much about the guy, which is crazy. Um, and so, yeah, I'm always getting approached by people whispering in my ear saying, is Tommy who he says he is? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And of course they come to me since I'm the expert. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> Seemed like the, I'm the expert, Mark. And, um, and I say, you're right, but I, 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 I myself don't know who he is yet either. And I'm wondering if maybe he is this guy you mentioned earlier. So it could be, it could be D.B. Cooper. He could be D.B. Cooper. Why not? Also, D.B. Cooper was like 40 in 1971, which fits the approximate age of Tommy now. Because <laughs> Tommy is, I don't know, 150? No, I don't, I don't know how old Tommy is, but he's not the age he claims to be, that's for sure. Oh, man. Interesting. Oh, man. Interesting. Because we have it under pretty good authority, and <laughs> I'm not just talking about Paul here. Though, Paul, you are a fine authority. I would like to think so, thank you. We have it under pretty good authority that Mr. Wiseau may have been the very D.B. Cooper who jumped out of an airplane with $200,000 in the Oregon Territory. Wow. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. There have been questions about how he has funded his masterpiece and questions of his origin that potentially people feel may be the key to the famous Hollywood mystery. Uh, Mike, you're, you're talking about uh, D.B. Cooper here? Yes, Paul. I'm talking about Mr. D.B. Cooper, who, as I said earlier, jumped out of a plane with $200,000, and the FBI has yet to find him. Right. Well, hopefully we will make contact with him momentarily, right here in, in, in front of his apartment. But until then, what I would suggest, Mike, is we look at some of the facts and present these facts to our listeners and to Robin to get her take on the matter to see if we can shed some light on this mystery. Well, Paul, now that you've mentioned that, I do actually have another question about 
Robin's involvement or knowledge that she claims not to have Uh about whether or not Tommy Wiseau may or may not be D.B. Cooper. Robin, may I ask you about episode three of the, the room actors, Where Are They Now? Of course. In episode three, Peter says to someone in a fight, trying to brag and make himself feel better, he says that he has 749 Twitter followers. Does that number mean something? Oh, isn't that the number, the, the flight number of D.B. Cooper's? Not? Oh, oh, wait, no, it's not quite. It's, it's ah, well, it, that may be, and maybe my research is, is twisted, but I, wow. was doing a little, I was doing a little math here, and I found that if you add the numbers 7, 4, and 9, you get 20. And if you add 2 and 0 together, you get 2. And 2 is the number of hundred thousands of dollars D.B. Cooper took, and I thought perhaps this was your way of letting the world know. That is genius. I mean, there are for you to have figured that out, you solved it, and I'm really impressed. Throughout the mockumentary, there are many, many references to the D.B. Cooper, um, I guess you call it hijacking and uh-huh. stealing of the $200,000 and the, the parachuting out, parachuting out of the plane. I mean, you know, we all wished we could have parachuted out of the room situation but that didn't quite happen um it, we didn't parachute off the set although that would have been wonderful just like db cooper there are so many references in the mock room mockumentary to the db cooper situation and i like my mind is just like completely blown that you found found them mm-hmm. um mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so kudos to you and uh-huh. yeah, uh-huh. Is, my, is my short answer Robin, I don't know if you have seen pictures of, uh, well, I I shouldn't say pictures, the FBI sketch of one D.B. Cooper, but if you have seen the sketch, you might know that Mr. Cooper has a tendency to wear sunglasses. I think it's interesting, and perhaps uh, we can get your take on this, that Mr. Tommy Wiseau yes. also happens to wear dark sunglasses quite often. Coincidence? I think not. Two people wearing sunglasses? Hello? That can't be a coincidence. Oh, 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 oh. Clearly they're the same person. And, I, and I'm glad you two are onto this, and I, I don't know why no one else has figured it out. Wow. But um, in a nutshell... There's so many similarities. The brown hair being one of them. The sunglasses being the second. Wow. Okay. I have another hard-hitting question, Robin, if you're ready for this. Why not? In your series, The Room Actors, Where Are They Now? You have a wonderful host, if you will, the documentarian, Craig, or played by Craig Kukowski. Yes. A wonderful character actor. He plays, as I said, the director, the person shepherding and herding and protecting all of the actors within your mockumentary. But did you know, and listener, I'm also speaking to you, did you know that one of Craig Kukowski's many other roles was on the television program Drunk History, where he played the pilot in the story about D.B. Cooper? Wow. Is this a coincidence? Or is he the man guarding the secrets and making sure nothing is getting out? Wow. I actually did not know that. And that just shows how I psychically knew to cast Craig Kukowski in the room actors uh-huh. where are they now uh-huh. like some part of my body was just like you have to cast him even though i didn't consciously know they clearly brought him into the mockumentary so that people would be able to figure out this this conspiracy mike incredible research as always well paul do you think it's time we take a couple calls from the the listeners to see if they have any questions for robin Absolutely. Let's get into the squirt line. Okay. Okay. (laughs) Fantastic. 
Hey guys, my name is Leslie and my question is for Robin. So I'm a big fan of The Room and I've really been enjoying The Room Actors new season. But I was wondering if any of your fellow co-stars from the show have had conversations with you about Tommy's true identity and whether or not they believe he might actually be D.B. Cooper. Thank you. Wow. Uh, well, I mean, we have been talking about it a bit, but yes, please. This is a coincidence of many signs. So, yes, uh, many of the actors in the room, actors where are they now and in the room, did approach me concerned that Tommy was actually D.B. Cooper. Um, this, it was kind of just a, a known secret that Tommy had. He had a lot of money. Obviously, he made the room six million dollars. Maybe he invested it back then, and it turned into six million. That's how he was able to fund the room. I mean, hello, where else did the money come from? Uh -huh, uh -huh, and uh -huh. so all of these room actors, they knew that. They figured it out, and they approached me, and they said, you know what, uh, you know, Tommy is D.B. Cooper. And I said, he probably is, guys. Let's just face the facts. That, that is something the government does not want you to know. No. Uh, Robin, if I if I may ask a quick follow up question in regards to your co stars in the room actors. Sure. When they took you aside and they expressed this concern to you, be it Philip, be it uh, Juliet, be it Kyle, did they speak in hushed tones? Absolutely. Yeah. One, they pulled me into the closet. Like, you know, my closet has a lot. Of, the, the, the sound is completely dampened, uh -huh. and they knew no one, no sound could get out. So, you know, a couple room actors were like, "I have to talk to you. Come, come meet me in your closet." You know, because we filmed in my house in my neighbor's house, and we went in the closet, and they said, "I think Tommy Stevie Watt uh, Cooper." Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And I said, "Yeah, of course he is, but shh, don't tell anybody." And then another time. Someone pulled me into their car. It was Philip. He's like, Robin, get in here. He pulled me in his car. He's like, I think Tommy's D.B. Cooper. And I was like, yes, he's uh, okay. Yeah, I know. And then one time, you know, I was, it was a nice day. We were like taking a little break. We were in the pool and someone yanked me under the water. And we're, they under the water, they said, Robin Thomas, D.B. Cooper. You know, but they, um, that I believe was Juliet. Um, we emerged from the, from the pool and, uh, you know, I said, you, you, you can just, you don't need to pull me under next time. Let's just talk out in the open. And um, so there were always people trying to yank me aside, pull me into different, you know, underground bunkers, things like that. Let's just, we all know Tommy Stevie Cooper, even when Tommy drove by the set, which he did numerous times, um, you know, and that's true. He drove by numerous times. Um, I told everyone, yes, it is Tommy slash DB Cooper, but let's all pretend like we don't see him and let's just keep shooting. Just as I suspected. Thank you, Robin. Of course. Do not worry. We at least are in bunkers under the ground, or I am. Paul, I guess I'm you're not. currently on the streets. I am in a bunker, though. I, I am exposed to everything. As you know, Robin, underwater is a very good way to escape the government. The men in black cannot get their suits wet, or they will sink. Yes. So, if you need to run, find the nearest pool true okay why don't we take another call and see what this next caller has to ask robin hello this is carl montana robin while a grad student at ucla you won the samuel goldwyn screenwriting award for your dramatic feature odd man out about a family raising a schizophrenic child you also won the Harmony Gold Award for Excellence in Screenwriting, the Jack Nicholson Screenwriting Award, Oliver's Prize in Screenwriting for Children, the National Association of Theater Owners of California and Nevada Fellowship in Screenwriting, and you were nominated for the Humanitas Prize in Screenwriting. What was your first thought when you read the screenplay for The Room? Uh, such an interesting. Well, thank you for knowing all that about my awards. I really appreciate it and for saying them all on the air. <laughs> um, yes. Let's see. Yeah. I mean, I I hadn't won those awards at the time when I read the room. This, but the reason I took a break, shall we say, from acting, is that I wanted to make sure that that I was only doing good projects <laughs> um, after the room. So I um, no, I the room. You know, the thing is, is I never saw the script for The Room. So in a way, that's a trick question. Tommy would not show me or anybody the, the script because he thought we would steal it. 
which is of oh. course. <laughs> um, so I can't, yes. can't really answer, but I will say when I saw the several pages I was doing, I mean, I'd seen better. Let's just say that I'd seen better. <laughs> After I was in the room and a few others, I was oh. like, you know what? Maybe I could write something better than this. I'm going to see if I can. So that's why I did. Fantastic. And the world is better for it. <laughs> Great question, caller. Yes. Well, Robin, I feel like we've gotten a good taste at the underbelly of this part of Hollywood, this little slice. And we would like to know how the listener here can find you and follow you and see your new series on the internet. Well, you can find me at www.robinparis.com. Robin with a Y. Um, you can find my show at www.theroommockumentary.com. It's also on YouTube. Um, yeah, so that is where you can find it and watch it. There's seven episodes out now. The eighth episode's coming out tomorrow. So by the time this airs, it will probably be out. And we have two more episodes I'd like to finish. Then I'll have the full 10 episode season series. Sorry. Um, but yeah, so watch it. If you love The Room, hopefully you'll like it. Lots of Easter eggs, lots of. Clues, lots of references to D.B. Um, Cooper. Cooper. Lots of references to D.B. Cooper. Um, and they're all hidden and buried in the show. And I'd like you to watch it and decide, is this a real mockumentary? Or is this, you watch it, you listen to your gut, you see what your gut tells you, and you'll get the answer. Um, and hopefully you'll laugh or at least crack a smile. As you watch the series. That is the perfect mindset for living life. Look for secrets and crack a smile. <laughs> well, as always, Paul, thank you so much for being the feet on the ground in the darkest of Hollywood, the underbelly of Tinseltown, the deepest, darkest crevices of Studio City. Thank you, Michael. I am still here at the Langham Apartments. And as I said, I will stay here all night at Tommy Wiseau's residence until he comes out here and tells us the truth. Um, Paul, I don't think that's the Langham Apartments. That's not where Tommy um, lived or lives. I, I think that's a, a location for the disaster artist, like where that was shot. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That's the wrong location, I think. Not to be like a know-it-all or anything, but, I'm, but I do know it all. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> well, if someone does, if someone would know, it would be wrong. Damn it! But that is, um, that, no, you're not at the right location. Damn it! Ooh. Paul? <sighs> okay, well, I, I will, I guess I will stay here and um, maybe, uh, uh, maybe Tommy will walk by or drive by. I don't know. Damn it! Well, Paul, thank you anyway. Better luck next time. Damn it. Damn it. Robin, thank you again for being our guests and sharing the truth that you know, and as well as sharing your series, The Room Actors. Where are they now on YouTube? Thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me. It's been an adventure. Absolutely. And I thank all the listeners out there and tell you to keep looking for the truth in the darkest parts of your mind. Good night. Good night.